Do you guys know that we have a young Ajoche fan in the house? You wanna see, you wanna see, you wanna see? Take a look. Ah! Hey guys, it's the Delphinator here and this is the Ajoche recap series week five so let's talk about the kids so these kids are in the bushes they've decided that they're going to take the wayfinder to the aleku tree because ona told them that the aleku is how the people of otroloje used to communicate with the gods back in the day and that that's how um they can find out their destiny so they decide to take the wayfinder there to find out their destiny like i said before why why are kids so concerned about destiny as a child what was my business with destiny anyway so these kids find their way to the bushes they encounter a stranger who seems to be ill i don't know he gives them a mirror they have an exchange next thing they're confronted by a snake they find a way to escape while all of this is going on at the village in Ochology, people are running helter skelter because is that the is that yes helter skelter there's chaos in the kingdom people are trying to find these kids the heir to the throne is one of the kids in the bushes so there's a lot of madness going on. The general's wife, who is the mother of the heir to the throne, is losing her mind. She finds her way to the king's presence. She rolls on the floor in front of the elders, talking about how she's not going to get up again until they find her son. They try to calm her down. They're like, woman, get up. We sent the executioner. Um, after these kids, they'll be found. Don't worry, everything is going to be all right. So somehow, the executioner finds the kids, and he leads them back to the village. So obviously, these kids are in a lot of trouble. They first get to Ona's house, that's the head healer's house, where she scolds them. They are whispering to each other about how they're going to go back again to find the Aleku tree after they have eaten the brushing from this first sojourn. Anyways, the next day, they make their way to the king's presence, and the king questions them about what they went to the bushes to do. Um, they answer their various questions, and obviously, um, they are going to be punished. Meanwhile, they showed the king and the rest of the elders what they brought back from the bushes. They told them about how they encountered the stranger. He gave them a mirror. Everybody's wild about this magical object. It's a mirror, guys. It's a mirror. This is in the 1800s, I guess. Mirrors were magical looking. I mean, you look at them and you see your reflection. What a wow, you know? Anyways, now that I think about it, it is because of mirrors. That's our, our brothers, our uncles, our fathers, our grandfathers were sold into slavery because of mirrors and gunpowder. That's by the way. Anyway, they decide that this object is evil and they decide to burn it. So everybody, this scene is super hilarious. So everybody gathers around. They put the mirror on the floor, put some sticks around it and, and light a fire. The thing does not burn. Wow. Even greater magic, you know. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to Awful now, the greatest character on this show with the two great raps of Fufu. Anyways, Awful realizes that her, it's like her jazz is not working any longer. Whatever it is that she has been putting the king's food or I don't know, whatever she has been using to try to jazz the king, it does not seem to be working. And even the jazz that she's using on the general too, it's like, the guy brain have correct because it's not working any longer. So, how I know that this jazz is no longer working? Um, Ofun and Ape's wife, that's the general's wife, they have a small, you know, showdown. The general's wife sees Ofun talking to the heir to the throne. She sees her, she's like, why are you talking to my son? And then tries to hit her. And Ofun, being the James Bond that she is, grabs her hand and screams, WITCH! and moves away. Then the next day, the general himself is wondering, like, how can you call my wife a witch? And they get to her, her hut, that's awful hut. They bring out all of her things. They drag her out, and they're like, auntie, it's time to go. You are going to Ufam. So it's like, for real, this jazz is not working any longer. OK, now, the other story arc I'd like to talk about is the four Abo boys who are in the bushes. So. They see a stranger sneaking around and watching them. And then this stranger, they catch him and ask him what he wants. And then he tells them that he has a job for them. And before he's able to say the next sentence, one of them screams and says, oh, no, we're not going to do it. We're not taking your job. 
And obviously, one of them is not happy about this because they need cash, they need money, they need to survive and stuff. And um, I think they think about it, they are loggerheads. They eventually let the stranger go and they tell him that if he ever comes back, they'll skin him alive. They let him go. And while they are alone, they start to discuss about whether to take the job or not. They eventually all agree, except one, that they will take the job. So I'm, I'm really wondering what that is about. I'd like to see what comes out of that. Also, the way the last episode ended with them bending over the mirror and just watching to see if it would burn, I would like to see what happens when they find out how magical this mirror object is. Anyway, that's all, folks. I hope to see you guys at the recap next week. Once again, it's the Delphinator here. Do not forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and share this video. Till the next one. Toodles. But before then, do you guys know that we have a young Adjoche fan in the house? You want to see? You want to see? You want to see? Take a look. <laughs>